Hi everyone, thank you for coming to the YouTube video and today we will be starting the first topic of your set 4 syllabus but before that I would just want to recap what we have done so far and what you are going to expect in 2021 when you are in secondary 4. So what you have seen here is actually the uh, Cambridge syllabus for physics in 2020 and it will be the same syllabus when you are in 2021. So let's do a quick recap on what we have done so far and uh, I will give you an overview on uh, what you are going to expect. So down here, this is the full syllabus. Uh, I have already highlighted the topics that we have done in yellow. So down here, you can see that, uh, for example, we have done kinematic dynamic, which is forces. And there is this topic, mass weight density, which you have to self, which you have uh, self-studied. Now, uh, what I have highlighted in pink are the, the chapters that is left and uh, it will be done in secondary four. So if you have a quick look at the pink color chapter, you can see that there is a, there are about nine different chapters. And how much time do we have to cover all this? Um, our prelim usually fall in May, okay? And that is before your June holiday, okay? Uh, Depending on um, the, the COVID situation, it may extend to July. So what we are going to do is that we are going to plan for the worst. Let's say we are going to have the prelim at the end of May. How much time do we have? Now, if we subtract your Chinese New Year holiday, your New Year holiday, your March holiday, your whatever holiday, like your uh, Labor Day, things like that, we basically have one month out. So let's cancel out February since it is the shortest month. So down here, you can see that we are left with one, two, three. And don't forget, we have to start revision maybe two weeks before the actual prelim. So let's say I have half of this month. So each month, let's estimate that we have four weeks. So we will have this amount of time. So that is about 10 weeks. 14 weeks. So if you think about it, we have 14 weeks and we have nine topics to cover. Now every two weeks, we have about eight lessons. So this is for every two weeks. Now out of these eight weeks, two of the, uh, out of these eight lessons, two of the lessons will be already been used to do practical. And then after each practical, we would need to go through your lab report uh, go through report. So this means is that we are left with five teaching period. So if I look at that, I would have about five teaching lesson per two week. So out of a 14 week uh, period, we would only have five times seven teaching lesson over a period of 14 weeks and that would give about 20, 35 lessons. How many topics do we have? We have about 9 topics. So if I do 35 lessons divided by 9 topics, we would get 4 lessons per topic. Now, this is a scary thought because if you look at uh, the content that you're going to have, pressure, energy, and electricity, they are actually abstract topics, meaning that there's no physical things for you to visualize or to, to rely on. For example, energy. Can you see or touch energy or like electricity? So actually, these uh, topics, why are they being... Why are these topics being taught in set 4 is because they are actually um, abstract topics. And normally uh, in set 3, we are actually supposed to finish up pressure, work and energy so that this 35 week, we will solely focus on your electricity and mechanism. However, due to the COVID situation and all the home-based learning and stuff, we have postponed the... Uh, pressure and energy topic to 2021. Now we do not know whether 2021, whether you will have a narrower syllabus like what they did this year, they pull out some of the topics. 
So if we plan for the worst, we can see that actually we are very rushed. We only have four lessons per topic. And within these four lessons, we have to teach you the new content, practice on the practice question and to go through your homework. And your, you guys know, sometimes you will, due to stress or poor time management, you couldn't complete the homework and then we have to spend some time to motivate you and things like that it will be actually be less than three lessons per topic and you will have your term test and to go through it to conduct the test things like that so actually these four lessons per topic is a overestimate so you can imagine how rushed we are in 2021 and because of that we are going to you know put your pressure topic online like what we are doing now so for the next segment i'm going to provide two times 45 minute videos to actually go through with you the basic of pressure so that when 2021 begin we will actually be at worksheet 7.2 and we can start on energy and for energy we have only about two weeks to complete and then after that we will have to rush rush rush, rush and then do the electricity Okay, we really do not want to compromise on learning activities that is fun or like demo and things like that. So because of that, I would really need your cooperation to finish up the pressure homework during your November, December holiday. It is very, very important. Okay, so for the, for the next segment, I'm going to begin a 40 minute uh, lesson on uh, worksheet 7.1 on the topic of pressure. Now that we have gotten the elephant out of the room, we can begin with our next segment, which is pressure. Now, pressure is not a new topic because in secondary two, you have come across this parameter. We learned that pressure is basically given by forces spreading over an area. Uh, we also know about its SI unit. So pressure standard SI unit is actually Pascal. It is actually made up of two unit forces is given by newton meter the si unit is meter square so it is not wrong to say that pascal is the same as newton per meter square okay now what is pressure basically we need to uh, understand why do we need to create this parameter that is because the effect of pressure is very different from the effect of a force I will give you a simple example. For example, if you are walking at home and someone accidentally step on you, and if that person is stepping on you wearing a flat shoe, you will feel kind of uncomfortable but bearable, right? That is because the person's weight is being spread across by a relatively large area which is like the heel of the shoe but in another case if for example you are being stabbed maybe in a shopping mall by a lady that is wearing high heels then the effect of the same person for example let's say with the same amount of weight let's say the lady is weighing 50 kilograms so the weight is 500 newton 500 newton if now he, she steps on you in a high heel you can see that this area compared to this area when she's wearing flats this area is big but this area is oops sorry but this area is small now even though the weight of the lady is the same 500 newton but because she steps on you with a different area one wearing flats one wearing heels you will feel quite differently right obviously you will feel that it is more painful when she step on you in high heel compared to when she step on you on flats so we actually learned that pressure actually give rise to a different effect even if the force applied is the same so because of that, it is worth our while to actually pay more, pay attention and study pressure. Now, some may ask, hey, in that case, is high pressure better or low pressure better? Is there such a thing? Now, it depends on the situation. For example, when you are using your thumbtack. Now, what is a thumbtack? Basically, thumbtack has this 
plastic over here and then down here is actually a metal pin you use it to actually stick your whatever post-it note uh, on top of a uh, on top of a soft board right so how this works is that this thumb pin when you push into the thing it will actually pierce into an other object now that is where pressure come about when you want to use a thumb pin to actually sink into the softboard, would you want to use a lot of force or do you want to use very little force? Because you are going to push this thing in, right? You are going to apply a certain force. Do you want this force to be huge or small? You want it to be small, right? Now, in order for an object to sink into another object, what matters is actually the pressure. So, in order for something to sink, we would want to have high pressure. But at the same time, we want this high pressure to be produced by a relatively small force because we, we want the thumbtack to, you know, just go in with as little effort as possible. So if we look at the formula P equals to F over A, I want this to be big and I want this to be small. So what should be the value for this particular parameter, the area? We want it to be even, even smaller, right? We want this to be like super small so that this tiny amount of force can still generate a big pressure. How do we get a very, very small area of contact? We make sure that this pin over here is extremely sharp so that the object can sink into an other object. Now, what other application uh, requires similar uh, mechanism? Well, when you take your flu jab or hopefully there will be a COVID-19 jab, you would want the needle to sink into the flesh very quickly, right? And with very little effort. You do not want to, you know, have a hammer. The nurse take out a hammer and hammer the needle into your flesh, right? You would want the nurse to, you know, just use his, you know, skillful hands to just and then the needle go in and you don't feel that much pain. So similarly, in needle, when you want things to sink into another object, you would want high pressure. So to summarize, why are we studying pressure? One of the reasons is that because we know that an object actually penetrates an other object due to pressure. So you may, you may say, teacher, in that case, uh, does it mean that we always want high pressure? Is there a situation whereby we want low pressure instead? Can you think of one? Okay, maybe you may have difficulty thinking of one because you have not entered into the army or you are not you are living in a you are living in a tropical country where there's no winter snow so for example in a construction site where you have mud whereby the ground is very soft and you need to walk on it do you want to walk on the mud uh with your feet on the mud or or do you not mind your feet get sink into the mud while you are walking. So when you are walking on soft ground like mud or snow, you would want to not sink into the mud or uh, snow, right? So high pressure would enable an object to sink into another object or to penetrate into another object. So similar, uh, so in, 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 in opposite, for example, when you're walking on soft ground, you would not want your feet to sink or penetrate into the ground, right? So in that case, if you do not want this to happen, you would want to have low pressure. So how could you achieve low pressure? If you look at the formula P equals F over A, if you want this guy to be like small, what you can do is, of course, you go on a diet to hopefully reduce your weight, right? Because when you step on the on the mud, basically you are applying a downward force, which is your weight onto the ground. But uh, you know that weight loss can be difficult. So what to do? What if you have a constant weight? Can you devise certain things so that you can have low pressure? Well, you can. You have to make sure your area is very big. The contact area is very big. How do you have a con big contact area? Well, one way is to have a giant feet like McDonald's. 
uh, but you cannot stretch your feet, right? So what happened is that they have this thing called snowshoe. So at the very beginning, uh, olden days, they just use uh, whatever resources they have to actually increase their feet area. So they wore this on their feet. Now, uh, nowadays, if you want to go for uh, mountaineering in snow region, what you can do is that you can put on devices like that to increase the contact area when you are stepping onto the snow so that you will not uh, sink into the soft snow. Uh, how about in construction site? Well, in construction site, you actually uh, see that uh, um, they, the, the, the heavy vehicle, they don't use wheels, right? But instead, they actually use this. Um, let's see if I can uh, show you. They use this, right? So, for example, this. Why is it that they use this? Because the belt will actually increase the contact area between the vehicle and the ground. So, by doing so, those vehicles is very heavy they are made of metal they have to lift heavy things so they have an enormous amount of weight so if you do not want this machine to get stuck and sink into the ground you would not want to use wheel but you use wheel belt so the wheel belt basically increase the contact area between the machine and the ground and that will reduce the pressure so when you reduce the pressure you would not sink into the ground so what i have covered at this very beginning is that why we are studying pressure because the effect of pressure is very different from effect of forces effect of pressure will determine whether an object sink into an other object and depending on the situation you would want to have high pressure if you really want the object to sink into it with ease or if you want to keep that thing on top of the, the other object like walking on snow walking on mud etc etc so this is the very, 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 very basic level of pressure. And I think you would have covered it in secondary two. So what are some questions in set three or set four that you would not have? How is your upper set different from your set two? Well, uh, one example could be they can give you an example like this. It is a table with four identical feet. And then they say that, oh, now I tell you that the weight down here is, let's say, 2,000 Newton. Can you please find me the pressure here, given that down here, the area of one of it is actually a 0 0.02 meter square? Well, they may ask you that, and uh, you may have some dynamo. Oh, okay, uh, one of it is like that. So is it like 2,000 divided by 0 0.02? Now, if you are doing that, then you are missing the point. This is not how pressure works. So how do pressure work? So first of all, the weight will be equally distributed among the four uh, legs. Oops, sorry. So how it will look like, it will be like this. It will be W over 4, W over 4, and W over 4, and W over 4. So actually, the pressure of each leg is actually W over 4 divided by each leg's area. So it is like that. So uh, this is like the first level of set 3 pressure. To recap, your set 3 level 1 kind of uh, questions on pressure will require you to have the basic understanding on how pressure is exerted by a solid so basically, they will test you on your application on P equals to F over A, just like how we have, how I have shown you about the simple table uh, question where you are required to find the pressure under each leg. And of course, a uh, structure question, they would ask you like whether you should increase or decrease the pressure so that you can take advantage of the situation. So for example, if you have a thumbtack, you would want to have a high pressure but if you are driving a heavy vehicle over some very soft ground to prevent the machine from sinking into the ground you would want to have low pressure you need to know how you can achieve that for example if you want low pressure then you would want to increase the contact area not surface area contact area and if you want to use like very little force for something to sink into another object you would want to reduce the contact area so that with a little force you could still generate a large enough pressure so one thing to remember about the first part of pressure is that your area this area over here is actually called contact area not surface area 
surface area include the entire surface so for example if now i ask you when you are stepping on the ground is your surface area going to affect the pressure that you are exerting on the ground or is it the contact area between your feet and the ground i think you would know that surface area includes your face your scalp your body and everything that is obviously not the area that you want to divide your weight over right so because of that please pay attention uh, please be mindful that when you are answering structure question the a that you are referring to is the contact area now we are going to move on to the level two kind of question when you are in secondary three and that is pressure exerted by liquid so what is the difference between solid and liquid is that your liquid can flow and because of that you can use liquid to transmit pressure now what do i mean by that so i'm going to give you a scenario now what would happen if i have a u-shaped cylinder that is with the same cross-sectional area between the left and the right okay it is just a youtube uh, now what happened is that i put water into it or liquid like oil so i put liquid into it what happened next is that uh, i would actually let me put this down i would actually uh, put a piston here and then after that i put a piston here okay and what i'm going to do is that i'm going to exert a force downward over here now, when I exert a force downward on the left-hand side, what would you think would happen on the right-hand side? It would get lifted up, right? That, and that is because two key points. Key point number one, your liquid would transmit your pressure from your left piston to the right piston, right? Now, the second characteristic of the liquid that enables this to happen is because your liquid is incompressible. That means the volume is fixed. And because the volume is fixed, when I push down on one end, the other one would rise. Now, can I do that with solid? I cannot. And that is because the third characteristic, and that is your liquid can change shape. Right? I can't do I can't do solid because the solid would not be able to change its shape, you know, and to, to, to accommodate the change in the column height. So this is quite straightforward, right? So the interesting thing about this or how we take advantage of this situation is that what if I am going to make the the U-shaped cylinder now with different cross-sectional area? And I put the same thing. I'm going to put in a piston here. And then I'm going to put in a piston here. Now, I'm going to put in some dummy value now. So AL, let's make it 1 meter square. And I have an AR, which is 10 meter square. Now, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to apply a force over here. Let's say I apply a force of 2 Newton to make things simple. I want to find out how i know that this this right hand side piston is going to go up but i want to find out by how much force okay we are going to try to do that and i can i can calculate this because i know that because i know that my liquid is incompressible and that it is transmitting the pressure from left to right right meaning to say this force over here is going to generate a certain pressure in my gas uh, in my in my liquid and this pressure is going to be transmitted to the right hand side piston so in another word if i want to put this in mathematics so let me erase this if i want to put this in mathematics it means that the pressure on the left hand side would be the same as the pressure on the right hand side because pressure will get transmitted by my fluid inside this u-shaped cylinder with different cross-sectional area right and i know that my pressure is given by the force over area and this pressure can be expanded similarly like this correct 
Now I can put in my values to see how it will look like. The force on the left is 2 Newton. The area on the left is 1 meter square. The area on the right is 10 meter square. And the force I want to find out is this. Now if I go and solve this, I would actually get Fr equals to 2 multiplied by 10. What you have seen here is that you will see that your force on the right hand side is actually equals to 20 Newton. Now what does this mean? This means that we have amplified the force over here, the input force on the left, 10 times. Fr equals to 20 and that is what a hydraulic jack is. You use a very small force to lift up something that is very heavy. Then if you know this, you may be asking yourself, Hey, I have just amplified 2 Newton into 20 Newton. What if I change the area here? Oops, sorry. What if I change the area here, not to 10, but to 1 million? Then my output force would be increased by a factor of 1 million. I can even create such a big force that I can reach the speed of light because F net is equals to MA. Oh my god, does that work? Now, there is a catch. I want you to focus on the diagram that I have drawn on the left hand side. Now, what happened, this is like an isometric wheel of the liquid column that is inside this U-shaped cylinder. Now, when you apply a force on the left, what happened is that the liquid column on the left is going to go down. And it is going to go down by, for example, this amount. Let's say it goes down by D equals to, say, 5 meter, very deep. Okay. Now, because liquid is incompressible, meaning that when this certain volume L has go down, that means my right hand column is going to rise by a certain amount that I do not know. But I know this volume because this volume has to come from VL. So basically this volume of R that rises up has to be equal to the volume of liquid that I have pressed down on the left. So I know that this cross-sectional area on the left hand side is one meter square. That's how I see here on the right. And down here, AR is going to be 10 meter, right? Just now the dummy value we put in. So how do I calculate this volume? Well, the volume is given by the cross-section area times the height, right? So down here, I would have AL times DL must be equal to AR times DR. What is A? L, that is 1. I give the input distance. I have used the 2 Newton force to press down on my left piston by 5 meter. Now this volume of liquid that I press down is going to reappear on the right hand side piston right to go up that much. Well I know my AR is 10 now I want to find out how much it will rise. Will it rise 5 meter? Well let's see. I actually find out that my distance traveled by my right hand piston is just 0 0.5 meter compared to I have to press 5 meter. Can you imagine 5 meter is how tall? From this, your house ceiling to the ground is about 3 meter. You press from, you know, half a floor up from your ceiling, you press down all the way to the ground. That is the amount of distance 5 meter is. And then for the right, right hand side piston, it will boop, go up by 50 cm, 0 0.5 meter. So there's a catch. Now, even if you have a hydraulic jack, you can use a very, very small force to produce a very, very huge force. The catch is you have to travel by a much larger distance on the left hand side and the right hand side will actually move by just a bit. So I'm not sure whether you have seen this thing. Uh, let's call this a wheel jack. So this thing, so a car is actually quite heavy and if you have a punctured tire, you need to lift up the car before you can take out the wheel and change a new wheel in, right? So what happened is that they have this jack 
what happens is that you just need to step on it. And when you step on it, a lot of time, the car will get lifted up. Why? Do you think the, the amount of force you step on the jack is enough to lift up the car? No, right? But what actually happens is that this is actually a hydraulic jack. When you use your feet to press down on one cylinder, the other end of the cylinder ha will have enough force to lift up your car. But it will be just lifting up by just that tiny bit, which is not enough for you to take out the wheel. So what you need to do is that you need to step on it multiple times. So for example, your, your feet, you lift it up and you press it down. Maybe your feet would travel, let's say 50, cm 0.5 meter and you need to step on it like 20 times so actually your feet has actually traveled like five times 0 0.5 or 20 times 0 0.5 that is like about 100 meter and the car will be just lifted up by a bit and that is the trade-off you try to amplify your force but you trade it off with the distance you travel now in the next chapter when you learn this thing called conservation of energy you will realize what happened here and that is for this hydraulic jack there's also the conservation of energy so i'm going to pause here and we are going to now go back to the worksheet and we're going to apply what we have learned here to the questions in your worksheet okay so please take out your worksheet now now we are going to apply what we learn and we are going to consolidate using this worksheet 7.0 uh, if you do not have this worksheet, please ask your teacher to send you the soft copy because once 2021 starts, it's going to be rush, rush, rush. Okay, so let's begin. Basic content. What is the formula that defines pressure? And you can actually use your textbook and you can see that pressure is given by P over A. Uh, P equals to F over A. Please take note, the area that we are talking about here, is it surface area? Is it base area or is it contact area? Now please remember it is not surface area, it is not base area, although sometimes we, we accept it. The strictly speaking one, the uh, what, what A is strictly speaking is contact area. Contact area, don't forget to mention between what and what, okay? Now, SI unit, the unit of pressure, there are many units, but the standard international unit is actually Pascal, PA. Uh, in the next segment, you will also learn that it can be measured by MMHG or CMHG. Okay, and of course, if you are into aviation, they actually measure pressure by far. Okay, uh, there are two equipment we use to measure pressure. We are going to talk about it in the next segment, so we are going to leave this blank first. So what we're going to do, we are going to focus on what we have done, the hydraulic jack. So this is what a hydraulic jack is. Uh, in a car workshop, uh, we, they need to lift up the car to actually surface what is underneath. Okay, so they were going to use a hydraulic jack to lift it up. And like I said, the use of a hydraulic jack, the objective of it is basically we want to use a very small input force to produce a very huge uh, output force and the trade-off is the distance that the piston have to travel so if you want to lift up the car really high then your left hand side piston will have to move like really 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 long distance okay uh, there are two basic principle one is we have covered that the liquid inside the hydraulic jack actually transmit the pressure and in mathematics this basically tells you that the uh, pressure on the piston x is equals to pressure uh, produced by piston Y. Now, unfortunately, you have not learned what is work done, so we are going to leave this later on. Uh, what I have uh, changed, uh, what I have done is that uh, instead of talking about work done, uh, we have, I have tried to explain the sec the second uh, the uh, the second working principle in terms of volume. So the second working principle is that the liquid inside is incompressible in another word whatever volume that you displace by your piston x is going to reappear in the volume uh, that rises up on the right hand side yeah so that is vx equals to vy so far so good now we are going to apply our knowledge here in uh, actual question so down here is basically the same hydraulic jack, but instead of a U-shaped jack, I have an L-shaped one. So we have 
piston A whereby the input force is 300 newton and I have a small piston area 20 cm square what it is trying to do is trying to move up the piston B which has an area of 400 and I do not know how much force will be produced over here so I do not know what is the maximum thing uh, the first question is that I have to use the concept about pressure and I have to give you this uh, formula so I think here uh, what we, we need to do is that we need to make use of our principle number one this is your principle number one px equals to py so we can do that but instead of x and y we now will call it pa pressure by piston a will be transmitted to uh, piston b okay so this equal sign is uh, in this case is transmitted so once we have that we know that uh, pressure produced by piston a is given by this and uh, pressure that reappears at b is given by this so we will have f a equals to a a f b equals to a b and uh, if now we make f b the subject you would actually get this a b over a a times f a uh maybe i skip too many steps uh, i would i would do it slowly so down here is like this right times a b correct so i would have f a a b over a a can see so now what happened is that i leave this I, I want to present it like this is a ratio between the area and then i just take out the f a okay so that's how you get to here but if you do not like to manipulate this don't worry skip this so now on part b i have to uh determine output force right so like i said this is not a formula that you want to remember okay what is important is actually this starting expression so i will show you how to go about this to find the output force so i'm going to continue with this expression because i don't need to memorize any additional thing so the force at a is actually 300 the area of the piston is given as 20 cm square and then uh, after that uh, fb we do not know but then we will have ab which is given as 400 cm square so now if i uh, make fb the subject i would have something like that right 300 newton over 20 cm square multiplied by 400 cm square so at this point for those who are very sensitive to unit you may say teacher i thought you say at the very beginning this a the si unit is in meter square meter square right but how come here you use cm square you never convert the unit that is why i am writing this out can you see down here the cm square eventually will get cancelled off so because of that you do not need to change the unit it will eventually get cancelled off yeah so now if i press the calculator you will actually find that my fb is actually equals to 6000 newton and it is quite impressive right you input 300 you get an output of 6000 so what is the trade-off now down here because you have not learned uh work done yet you are going to skip this now how do i know how much i need to move if i want the load to move up 4 cm now just now i explained to you when i have a hydraulic jack uh, in this case my hydraulic jack looks like this right when i push in piston a my piston a is going to move by this amount of uh, that right so whatever volume that you displace in a this volume is going to reappear over here to push up the piston b correct so down here what we can do is that we can say that the volume at a must be equals to the volume at b right the volume that you push in at a side will reappear at b side so uh how do we know now what happened is that we know that the load has to move up by 4 cm we do not know how much we need to push here so the area of a cylinder is always given by the cross-sectional area multiplied by the height so this column is like this for va and then for vb it will be area b multiplied by the height of the cylinder at b so once we 
once we uh, put in the numbers, we can take a look how it will look like. So A, I think is 20 times D, I do not know. A, B is 400 times the required height that uh, the load has to move, which is 4 cm. So now if I make D the subject and I press the calculator, I would actually know that, oh, it is 80 cm. So you can see that what is the trade-off? So even if you use a very, very small force to produce a very huge force, when you use when you apply the small force, you need to apply it for 80 cm just to produce a 4 cm rise on the other side. So what is the conclusion? The conclusion is that your hydraulic jack can amplify amplify a small input force into a huge output force okay this is done at a cost and what is the cost the small force would need to travel a huge distance before the huge force would travel a small distance okay and that is what the mathematic is telling you okay now what happened is that now you can actually try out question five okay i'm going to take a pause here and i want you to try it and then after that you can play the video I hope you have some fun trying out this question because I throw in the word efficiency to test whether or not you are blindly applying the formula or that you really understand it. Okay, so let's take a look. I have a weird uh, hydraulic jack, but basically what you need to know is that when you apply a pressure at piston P, this pressure is going to get transmitted through the liquid and then it will reappear at piston Q. Now what happened is that uh, now we have to calculate the force that is exerting on piston Q. So what happened, we are going to use principle number one and that is the pressure made by piston P is going to get transmitted to the, to the, to the piston Q. Now unfortunately, this is no longer the ideal case because we have an efficiency, meaning that what we have done here is that we assume that 100% of the pressure produced in piston P is going to get transferred to piston Q. But now with an efficiency of 95%, I no longer have the full pressure being transmitted, but instead I'm going to have only 95% of what I produce in P getting transmitted to Q. So the 95% should appear on this side. Now, once you overcome this difficulty, then it is about just being careful in your mathematics and you will be able to solve this question. So I have this, I expand it out into uh, the, the equation and then after that I'm going to put in numbers to it. Now what I want to find is the force uh, at Q. So meaning that I want to have FQ on this side and I'm going to bring the AQ to the other side. So when I do that, I would have something like 95% FP and I would have my AQ multiplied to here. So I have this. So now can you see over here, I would have a ratio between Q and P. And I know the ratio between P and Q is one over four. So down here, there's some mathematics, right? This is AP over AQ would be equals to one over eight. In another word, AQ over AP would be eight. And AQ over AP, basically is what I want here. So now I can substitute all the things that I need. This will be 95%. FP in this case is 40 Newton, right? Uh, yeah, 40 Newton, because this is the force exerted on piston P. So I would have 40 multiplied by eight times uh, 95%. So my FQ will be 8 times 40 times 0 0.95. It will be about 304 Newton. Change it to 2SF. It will be this. Simple. 
Now for part B, it is a trick question uh, because you would expect me to actually ask you to calculate the distance travel, right? But I don't want that. I want to teach you a lesson. So what we have done here is that we can see pressure is being transmitted from P to Q through a liquid. Now, how about this solid piece of punch, right? This is what we call a punch. So what will happen here? Will the pressure get transmitted? Unfortunately, no. What happens is that in solid, pressure don't get transmitted. It is the force that gets transmitted. So if you have a force applied at Q, the force would reappear in this solid at R. So down here, the, the base equation would be FQ is being transmitted to R. And if you have that, then what happens is that you already know your FR is 300 Newton. Your FR will also get 300 Newton. But because your R has a smaller surface area, the pressure will be different because P equals F over A. Now this pressure is spread over a much smaller area over here. So your cross-sectional area of R is actually 0 0.005 meter square. You will have to divide it. You can no longer say that the pressure get transmitted because uh, between Q and R, it is not a liquid, it is a solid. So that's why you will get 60,000 Pascal. Yeah. So this is a two-stage hydraulic jack. You use a small force using the liquid to transmit the pressure from uh from 40 newton at here you actually amplify it at q until it become 300 newton then you further amplify the pressure using a small punch right at the end down here you have a small cross-section area and you actually increase the pressure at out to 60 thousand pressure 16 thousand pascal because you want to sink this punch into the metal sheet so that it can cut a hole it's like your hole puncture yeah so this is basically how a calculation question would look like for pressure and you may be asking teacher can you please explain what 95 percent why is it that my pressure don't get transmitted completely to the q side and that is because when you have oil that is trapped between two pistons chances are this oil may leak and when you leak uh, from a hydraulic jack, what happens is that when the, the oil leak, air will go in and it will form bubbles in between. So for example, if you have a jack like this, uh, imagine some of this liquid came out and it will have bubbles forming inside. Uh, bubbles are actually basically space occupied by a gas and gas and liquid, are they the same or different? Liquid versus gas, they are different, right? For liquid, it is incompressible that's why it can transmit pressure but once you have air bubble or gas bubble in in it gas bubble are actually compressible so while you are transmitting pressure from one end let's say piston a and it hits a bubble the bubble will actually get squashed and absorb some of this pressure so because of that not all the pressure get transmitted to your the other piston so down here if you look at uh, the second page um, why is it that air bubble would reduce efficiency on a hydraulic press? That is because when you input a certain pressure on one end, uh, the bubble being compressible, it will absorb some of the pressure and so you won't get the full pressure getting transmitted. So how do you put it in words? Okay, I want you to try. So please pause the video and try, okay? Pause now. Okay, I, I, I hope you have fun uh, trying to pan down your 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 answer so essentially one of the key thing is that you need to point out to the examiner that you are aware that this air bubble contain gas and gas is compressible so maybe to explain this the first line you should state that i know this okay you you will say that oh the air in the bubble in the bubbles are compressible so after that, you need to show the examiner that you know the working principle of a hydraulic jack and you know what is the consequence you would have if you have something compressible in between. So hence, um, the pressure 
exerted by the input piston will be used to compress the bubbles and not all of it will be transmitted so this is a keyword to the output pistol piston so i will stop here take a break this would conclude the first video lesson on pressure we are going to move on to fluid pressure in the next video okay have a good rest